I was climbing a long ridge west of Mount Clark. It was one of those mornings when the sunlight was burnished with a keen wind and long feathers of clouds moved in a lofty sky. The silver light turned every blade of grass and every particle of sand into a luminous metallic splendor. There was nothing, however small, that did not clash in the right wind, that did not send arrows of light through the glassy air. I was suddenly arrested in the long crunching path up the ridge by an exceedingly pointed awareness of the light. The moment I paused, the full impact of the mood was upon me. I saw more clearly what I had ever seen before or since. The minute detail of the grasses, the small floatsome of the forest, the motion of the high clouds streaming above the ridges. I dreamed that for a moment, time stood quietly and a vision became but a shadow of an infinitely greater world and I had within the grasp of consciousness the transcendental experience. Ansel Adams In a world filled with color, captured so finely with the newest of photographic innovations, there is still a place for black and white photography. Ansel Adams, so long ago, reset the standard for what a black and white landscape photograph should represent. And his amazing photos still resonate even today. A few years ago, I began an experiment, really. It was called the Ansel Adams Project and it was an attempt to return to my early days of photography where I mostly shot in black and white. But it turned into so much more. It became an awakening where how I viewed the world photographically fundamentally changed. I no longer sought just the color realm of nature, but I began to visualize, much like Hansel did, how a potential scene might be represented as tonal values characteristic of black and white. My eye evolved to where even on days when I was not carrying my camera, I began to see the sky, the clouds, the hillsides, the fields and the flowers far beyond what their visual color portrayed and saw them for what they could become within the realm of a black and white rendition. Well, deep into 2023, the Ansel Adams Project was resurrected and I made a commitment to pursue capturing landscapes once again in the Ansel Adams style. Not to duplicate what he accomplished, no way I could ever do that, but to discover what I personally could accomplish by concentrating on that style of photography. And it has been an amazing journey, one where my drive to accomplish more than simply snapping images of the things around me, but to accomplish capturing images that possess a strength in their own merit. The following is a series of Ansel Adams style photos, most of which were made during the 2023 season, but a few go back a bit further. So please enjoy this version of the Ansel Adams Project.
boy, it's a really bright day today. We're, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon. Got some wispy clouds going across the sky. Uh, light's coming from my right and angling across here. And there's this old sycamore tree right here. It's kind of a really stately looking tree. It's right on the end of the tip of this peninsula. Kind of drops off down to the water. And it, uh, up against that blue sky, it looks pretty neat. And on the other side of the creek here, you've got this kind of a gravel beach through there. It makes a white line through there. And where we're going, this is on Barren River Lake. And we're going to start down here at uh, Browns Ford, kind of on the southern end of the lake. It extends way on down, but it, this is sort of like the southern end of it. And we're going to follow this, this route here. I'm going to go up this way. We're going to basically follow the channel. I'm going to go up this way. And we're going to go around this bend. We're going to angle across over here. Then we're going to go around this, this kind of a little wide, long point. Around like so. And then right here. That's where I normally camp. It's right in this area here. But I'm not camping today. I'm just going to be paddling so I'll probably stop there for a break but then I'm going to angle across Let's see this thing's kind of folded down I'm going to angle up from here I'm going to angle across go around this point and I'm going to go uh, uh, across this opening here and then around this point I'm going to angle down this way and I'm going to camp or not camp I'm going to stop about right here for another break that's where I'll probably have lunch right in this area here and I'm going to cut across over here and go up into this cove. Probably do a little fishing. And then I'm going to come down this long bluff, like so. And I'm going to go around this bend. And I'm going to go on up this way. You just kind of hug the channel here and hug the, the bank. And the, the, the goal is to go up into this cove up here. And then I'll turn around and just kind of follow that same path back, sort of like so. And I think I'm going to go up into this cove a little ways. I've never actually been up in there. I'm going to go up in there a little ways. And then, you know, same thing. I'm just going to follow that. And instead of cutting across like here, I may go down like this, and then kind of over and then cut across like so. And then, and then just on down back to here. That's roughly about 20 miles. If you, if you take all the zigzags,